Hi, I'm Igor Berman. I'm a software developer at Vbrick, and I've been working on connecting our product to the ServiceNow application. Learn how to embed Vbrick's AI-powered videos in ServiceNow knowledge articles and discover how this seamlessly operates behind the scenes using a widget. This video will be useful for anyone that creates knowledge articles, as well as developers that would like to customize other ServiceNow applications by adding video content. Your ServiceNow instance should already be connected to your Vbrick account. This gives you access to all the rich video features that Vbrick offers. Comprehensive analytics, enterprise-grade security and access controls, AI-powered search, transcription, translation, and metadata generation capabilities. First, I'm going to log into a Vbrick tenant. This one is called SN Demo, and I'm just going to verify that JAK configuration is configured. System settings, user security, JWT or JOT authentication, and I see that it's already been configured with a ServiceNow certificate. Now I'm going to go to my ServiceNow instance and ensure that the VBrick video app is installed and connected. Under ServiceNow All, I'm going to search for VBrick, and if I see VBrick video here, then I know that the app is installed. If I click on Setup Properties and I see some values under some of these fields, then I know that the app is already configured. I'm going to click on Add VBrick Video now, and I'm going to search for Quadcopter and select SP for the portal for Embed, then click on the magnifying glass. I'm going to get back a list of videos that match the search text that I type. I'm going to select one of these videos and then copy the embed code to my clipboard. The embed code references the ID of the video and can be reused for other IDs without having to search for a video if you have another ID. I'm going to go to All and search for My Knowledge Articles. I'm going to create a new article. I'm going to fill in the knowledge base, description, and short description. I'm going to type some text into the article body, then click the source code button to change to source code, and I'm going to paste in the embed code that we copied earlier. Then I'm going to save and submit the article. Now to view the article as a user would see it, I'm going to click on the article and click the view article link. And this is how the user is going to see that article when they refer to it with the embedded video on the page. This all works using a widget, which is packaged with the Vibrick app that's installed in your ServiceNow instance. The widget can be configured to play a given video by ID or to take the URL parameter that was inside of the embed code that we just copied and pasted. The widget authorizes the user to view and interact with a video by obtaining an authentication token based on the user's email or other unique ID, depending on how your Vbrick app is configured. The widget uses Vbrick's API, which is the heart of Vbrick's video platform as a service solution. And I'll show you how this works. There are actions and subflows that are also packaged with the Vbrick app. First of all, there's a connection alias which tells ServiceNow your Vbrick tenant URL. Go to All and type Connection, and then click on Connection and Credential Aliases. You should see a Vbrick alias as one of these connections and credentials. And if you click on it, this alias is going to have a Vbrick connection. And within that Vbrick connection, there is a connection URL. And this points to your Vbrick tenant. There are actions that use this alias to directly access the Vbrick API. To view these, go to All and Flow Designer. Within Flow Designer, click on the Actions tab and search for Vbrick next to application. You should see a number of Vbrick video actions on this list. A couple of the relevant ones would be Get Access Token. This takes that JOT or JWT key as a parameter and returns a token along with an expiration and a few other things. There is a get video content action. This is the action that returns a list of videos that you saw earlier. There is a get video details by ID action and that returns information about a video such as its title and description. 
and there is a is video public action which determines whether a video is public or private and if it's private then it'll be authorized only to certain users these actions are used by subflows and there are just three subflows that are packaged with the vbrick application there's the get connection subflow this is used to build the url of the thumbnail to a video there's a search content subflow which calls the content action we saw earlier to get a list of videos and an authorized subflow which is used to get an access token to allow a user to view a video these subflows are used by the vbrick widget to find the widget i'm going to go back to the all menu and search for service portal configuration from here i'm going to click on widget editor and i'm going to find the vbrick video widget if you've worked with widgets, you'll know that they're all separated into three major parts, an HTML template, a client script, and a server script. The HTML template is the part that the user sees. It has two parts in it, video player and a thumbnail to the video. In most cases, when you see the widget, you're going to see a thumbnail. And when you click on the widget, it's going to call this load video function, which is actually going to load the video player onto the page and allow you to watch the video. The client script has a few functions in it. Set up thumbnail click actually displays the thumbnail on the page and adds a function to that thumbnail called load video. When the user clicks on it, that function is executed and loads the video into the iframe and displays the iframe. There's a load video player function, which will load the video player after authorizing the user to watch the video. And there's a show player by video ID function and this is used if you put the video ID as an option to the widget rather than supplying the embed code as a URL parameter. Finally, the server script is what interacts with the subflows to actually get the video to authorize the user to the video and to get the code for the video player, which is displayed on the page. If you would like to make changes to this widget or use your own widget, you should clone it. Don't make any changes to this widget because they'll just get overridden the next time you update the vbrick application. You should now be more familiar with how you can add rich video content to ServiceNow using your connection to vbrick. You saw how easy it is to add videos to knowledge articles and have a basic understanding of how the widget and subflows and actions work so you can make your own customizations. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or want to learn more, please reach out to your vbrick service rep.